guys, so in this video I'm going to be answering some of my most frequently asked pre-Pacific Crest Trail through hike questions. These are things that I get asked all the time and I kind of just want to give you guys a long, well hopefully not that long, but a very in-depth answer to all of these questions and it'll also be kind of fun to look back on these answers if I am successful in my PCT 2017 through hike. So let's just get into this. Here we go. So first off, probably the number one question I get is, what is a through hike? A through hike, this is the most rapid way that I can possibly tell you. It is a long distance hiking trail. You do it on foot or you can do it on horseback for some of them. And it takes anywhere from a couple of weeks to X number amount of months. You carry everything you need, including your tent on your back, and you were sleeping in that tent every night, and you have to go into towns to resupply every probably seven-ish days. Next question, why on earth would you want to do such a thing? Well, every through hiker is going to have their own answer. There is an infinite number of answers to this, so I will just let you know my reasons. I have them written down on my phone so I can refer back to them on the trail when I want to die. Um, first off, I just want to observe God's creation. I want to be in it. I want to live it. I want to drink it. I want to breathe it. I want to eat it. I will be pooping in it as well. Uh, but yeah, I also want to have an adventure. I want to have a Lord of the Rings-esque journey. I want to have awesome tales to tell. I also want to kind of I love to do things that not a lot of people get to do or have those kind of experiences, which is why I went to North Korea and Mongolia and why I push myself to do terrifying things and face my fears, because it makes the conversation more interesting. I also want to gain survival and outdoor skills, and I want to do a lot of reading and get in shape, and I want to get away from technology. So those are... Probably not even all of my reasons. Oh, oh, there's still one more. <laughs> this one's kind of important too. I really want to spend this time thinking about my future because I have a lot of kind of big decisions coming up in the next few years and being out in nature by myself with my thoughts. I can think about that. Next question is, why did you choose the PCT? <sighs> well, this is probably gonna be the longest answer out of all of these. So if I think back to kind of the origin of this idea, it would probably go all the way back to the beginning of the TV show Lost. <laughs> I'm a major Lost fan and when they did the episode about John Locke wanting to do a walkabout in Australia, something about the idea of a walkabout just struck a chord with me and I've been fascinated with the idea ever since. I didn't necessarily feel like I had to do a walkabout in Australia, but I wanted to do some kind of journey and, you know, pushing myself. I'm not really one of those people like, I need to find myself. Yeah, I just really wanted to learn skills and get out in nature and kind of detox in a weird way. So, I kind of grew up on the east coast of the US for a big chunk of my childhood. So I was always familiar with the AT, the Appalachian Trail, and my sister and brother-in-law did about two weeks on the Appalachian Trail. So that was kind of always on my radar, but for some reason, and I don't mean this to sound negative toward the AT at all, um, but for some reason, the idea of the AT didn't really grip me enough. I don't know, it didn't really set my spirit on fire uh, the way I kind of need the motivation to do a through hike. So I, when I lived out in California, I kind of heard about this Pacific Crest Trail and I kind of put that at the back of my mind. And um, then fast forward, when I was living in Hong Kong, although there is a lot of um, nature in Hong Kong, it's also like the epitome of big city life. So I was looking out my window at all the buildings and I realized that I really, really need some time in nature. So. I started doing more research on the idea of a long distance hike and the PCT kept popping up and this was kind of when wild started to explode so there was so much information on the internet about the PCT and it just kind of checked off all the boxes that I wanted. I love the west coast and I think those landscapes are some of the most beautiful on our entire planet and the idea of getting to walk them, oh, it's just so, so inspiring and so exciting. My cat is shaking this right now. Samba, 
Thumb up. Ah, oh, it's like an earthquake. She's biting me. This is this is her. She's in all my videos now. All my videos as she bites my finger. Next question. Car. Other car. Car in the distance. Okay. Next question. Are you scared? Well, I'm probably not as scared as I should be. I kind of fancy myself as a pretty courageous person and I'm also not a worrier. So I'm not that scared. And the things that I'm scared about are really pretty stupid. <laughs> And I realize that they're stupid, so I'm not even really allowing myself to get scared about that. But I'm not scared about rational things like running out of water or hypothermia or getting lost in the wilderness. I'm scared about things like running into a tarantula or a camel spider in the California desert or going to sleep by myself in a tent and hearing the screech of a mountain lion or an elk. And if you have never heard one of those two things, allow me to play a clip for you because they're really something special. But before I do, picture, picture yourself in the wilderness, deep in the woods, by yourself, late at night, about to drift off to sleep, utter silence. And you hear this. <laughs> That's a mountain lion. That is, a, the living cry of a banshee that's gonna eat you alive. That's terrifying. There's also another terrifying sound is <laughs> the, the call of a, a male elk looking for a mate. I don't know what female elk is gonna be like, I wanna get on this if you listen to this call. <laughs> At least an elk is most likely not gonna eat me alive, but I'm really scared about those stupid things. Next question is, what are you most excited about? Now, I am so excited about so many things, but I will narrow it down to just a couple things. Um, for one, I'm really, really, really stoked to be back in the Yosemite area of California. I only spent one day in Yosemite in my whole life, and it was one of my favorite days ever. It's so beautiful, so I'm hoping that I can spend a couple days off the PCT and in Yosemite because the PCT goes through most of the John Muir Trail uh, but then when it gets to Yosemite it kind of splits off and the PCT goes north and the John Muir goes into um, Yosemite so the PCT permit doesn't really cover Yosemite and so you kind of have to get extra permits so I'm really really hoping that I can get some permits on arrival maybe even if I'm super 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 fortunate I can get one to Half Dome and spend a couple days doing that. So that is my dream. I hope it works out, but if it doesn't, I'm still in the general vicinity and it's just so beautiful in that area. So I'm really excited about that. I'm also really, really excited. This sounds like such a small, tiny things, but you know, they say, enjoy the small things. I am so excited to wake up to the sound of birds and to fall asleep to the sound of crickets. I know that sounds so stupid, but I think for Pretty much my entire adult life I've lived in really urban areas, so I don't really have that as a thing. And I vividly remember as a child, you know, waking up to the sound of birds and morning doves and falling asleep to the sounds of insects, and it was just so soothing and lovely, and I'm really excited to experience that again. And I mean, as I said, there are just so many things that I'm excited about, I can't even really list them all. Nature and weather and snow, and tents, and the sun. And that I can eat anything that I want, and it not matter. <laughs> Next question, what are you most nervous about? Well, apart from what I said I was a little bit scared about, I'm really, really nervous about the first two or three weeks on the trail. Because unfortunately, where I live in Indonesia, I'm not getting to physically prepare for this hike. I mean, the Basically, the best way and the most foolproof way to prepare for a trek is to get out and climb mountains with your backpack. And Surabaya, Indonesia does not really offer too many things like that. Um, so I know the first couple weeks are just going to be so physically exhausting and demanding. And I'm really not looking forward to that, if I'm honest. 
Um, and it's also just going to be really challenging because I am a newbie at this, so I'm going to be learning all these skills that, you know, experienced backpackers already know. And it's going to be really hard, so I'm very, very nervous about that. And I've read statistically that a huge percentage of people drop out within the first three weeks. And no one expects that to be them, including myself. So I really hope that's not me. I don't think it is because I've moved so many times and had so many like new beginnings and I always know that the first month sucks. So I really think that I will be able to deal with the frustration and the exhaustion even if I have to take it slow. So. Indonesia, folks. I'm also really excited about the peace and quiet. And obviously in the back of my mind, I'm nervous about hypothermia and running out of water and getting lost. But those things are so out of my hands at this point that there's really no point in being that nervous about it. Because if something horrible happens, it's either because it's circumstances that I absolutely have no control over and I just have to deal with, or it's because I made a dang stupid decision and it's my fault. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have to cross those bridges when I come to them and deal with the situation at hand. So really, what's the point in worrying about it at this point? The final question is, are you going alone? Whew. As a single female person, I get this question not only for the PCT, but for everything in my life because I'm a solo traveler as well, so I'm very, very used to this question. And the answer is yes, I'm going alone. Not many people have the desire to do this or have the availability to do such a thing, and you need both of those. Um, so yes, I'm going alone, and it's gonna be fine. I'm not worried about it in the slightest. I will meet people, but I'm also an introvert, so I don't mind being alone, and there's gonna be sections that I wanna be alone. So it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be great. So not worried about that, and neither should you. And that's it, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video and maybe found something useful. Let me know if you have any other questions that you're asked a lot, or if you have any questions for me, please give them to me. Comment down below in the comment section below. So good with words. Um, and maybe I will make a follow-up to this video if that's something that anyone's interested in. Um, I do want to let you guys know that for the next two weeks, uh, my videos will be uploaded just a couple days late because I'm going to be going on two really awesome weekend trips in Indonesia. So I won't be able to make the video and upload them on Sunday because I will still be in those places. But they're places in Indonesia that aren't really frequented by tourists, so I think you guys will find them really interesting. And I'm really, really, really excited to share them with you. But yeah, so the next two weeks they might be uploaded more like on a Tuesday or something like that rather than my usual Sunday. But I hope that you guys have a fantastic upcoming week and travel courageously, right? <laughs>